Hello, my name is Dushanka Kainovich. Thank you for joining us. Ethical dilemmas can happen every day in practice. At today's session, we'll provide some insights on commercialism and loyalty. I'd like to introduce you to Loretta, who comes to her local community pharmacy to collect her regular prescription for high blood pressure. She has no other condition that needs medication, but Loretta is worried about her weight. She speaks to Daisy, a pharmacist on duty, and asks her for her professional opinion on a slimming product that was previously recommended to Loretta by another pharmacist in that pharmacy. It is rather expensive product, but it is on a special offer now. Loretta has seen many advertisements about that product, but does not trust them completely. She wants a second opinion from a pharmacist to help her make decision, but she also wants to take advantage of a special offer. That product is a dietary supplement recently launched on the market, and the Daisy pharmacist on duty has heard mixed reports regarding its efficacy and safety. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, I've come to collect my medication. Okay, my name is Daisy and it's my first week here as a pharmacist. I see you have a medicine for blood pressure that you've been taking regularly for some time. How are you doing with it? Well, I'm okay, but always busy with three children at school and lots of pressure at work. No one wonder I'm taking medication for blood pressure. Now, I'm a bit worried because I think I've put on some weight. I see you have this remedy for slimming and they say it works, but I don't believe at all, all I hear on the telly. Do you recommend this product? Here's your prescription. Now we can talk about your weight. Tell me about your concerns. Well, I've tried to walk more and to control what I eat, but it's too slow. I need to see results faster. And I'm not sure if this new medicine is as good as they say it is. Last time I was here, your clinic recommended the product. She said many customers were happy and satisfied. The price was high for me, but I see that it's on a buy one, get one for free offer. Is it really as good and as fast as they say? What is your opinion about it? Well, I think... Um... of the issue at hand. A regular patient comes for refill of her blood pressure prescription. She's interested in losing weight and thinking of buying a new slimming product. That product is a dietary supplement and was recommended to her on a previous visit by other pharmacy staff. The pharmacist on duty is asked for her advice and wants to give an appropriate answer, but she is not sure that this product is safe and effective. So her professional opinion differs from those of her colleague. In addition, a patient in this scenario is making a specific request for a particular product, yet has some distrust on television commercials for it. The patient is relying on pharmacist's advice and the pressure to generate the sale could be very strong in this scenario because this supplement is available with commercial incentive. So what are the ethical parameters of this issue? In fulfilling the professional promise to society and to patients, pharmacists are guided by several ethical principles, and the following could be applied to this scenario. The principle of beneficence, then the principle of loyalty, also the principle of non maleficence the principle of accountability, the principle of respecting patients' autonomy, and the principle of professional autonomy. The principle of beneficence. If you provide professional opinions based on science-driven information, you're helping patients make informed decisions and you are benefiting uh, your patient's health. The principle of loyalty. This assumes that the pharmacy sections will be in the best interests of all concerned, their patients, their pharmacy, and their profession. Collegiality is a version of loyalty. The principle of non-maleficence. 
even if pharmacists would like to act in collegiality and not to oppose to a colleague's advice, they are ethically responsible to intervene in an appropriate manner if they believe there is a potential risk to patient safety. And what is an appropriate manner for pharmacists to intervene could differ from situation to situation. Ideally, the pharmacist ought to minimize any real or preserved risk to the patient safety, patient care, or pharmacy practice. Principle of accountability. Pharmacists must always act in the best interest of their patients, not in their own interests. It is this principle that holds them accountable, not just for their own actions and behaviors, but for those of their colleagues as well, ensuring practice that will support patients by sisters and overriding any other interests or professional dispute. The principle of patient's autonomy and professional autonomy are also relevant in this scenario. Please take a look at the other CPD bites where those are explained. Legal parameters. This slimming gauge is a dietary supplement and could be purchased outside a pharmacy without any legal constraints. If the pharmacist could supplies the product at pharmacy and the patient experiences any adverse effects of complication from using it, then the pharmacist may be held accountable. Although in some rare jurisdictions, pharmacy is considered as a healthcare institution and not permitted to offer any products for promotional sale, in many others, as you see in this scenario, it is legal for pharmacy to promote a sale of over-the-counter products or dietary supplements. Code of ethics and professionalism put a balance on the degree of commercialization over conflicting with the pharmacy's professional opinions. It is important for pharmacies to consider if a particular product is the most appropriate for a particular patient. Pharmacists are legally accountable to provide evidence-informed uh, advice about the potential benefits, also about potential risks of any therapeutics, any dietary supplements, or any preventive healthcare activities they provide. By failing to do so, both pharmacies in our scenario could facilitate the misuse of the product. Values. Pharmacists should hold several values related to their patients and profession. They should think of the following, empathy, trust, professionalism. It is important for the pharmacist to be mindful of the patient situation on a professional level, but also on patient's vulnerability on a human level. Loretta has expressed that she is concerned about her weight. It is also her belief that her health issues and weight are related. She's also concerned that she might not be able to afford a slimming product that could benefit her. However, she has some doubts about reliability on television commercials concerning the product. Every patient should be able to expect consistent evidence-informed advice from a pharmacist on a potential benefits, on a potential risks of using a product, and more so if patients ask for advice for more than one pharmacy practitioner. Pharmacists are accountable to a professional code of conduct and should practice in a manner that does not risk bringing the profession into disrepute. And honest differences on opinion between two pharmacy practitioners does not mean that one of them must be guilty of being non-professional or focusing on self-interests. Community pharmacy represents an environment when the care provided is not overseen by others of the team. So the pharmacy's competency to managing professional, commercial, and personal factors by avoiding competing interests will most likely be the most important factor in acting for the patient's best interests. Feeling uncertain uh, to answer straight away about the product, Daisy had several options, each with different implication. Let's see the option number one. Daisy speaks out against the advice of the other pharmacists he had given Loretta. She tells Loretta of her concern about the product safety and effectiveness. If she does this, loss of confidence to pharmacy practitioners is possible because of the opposite professional opinions, opinions given. 
beneficence and non-maleficence have been experienced in this option. It is legally permissible and appropriate for pharmacists to raise concern if they reasonably believe that the professional performance of the others may compromise patient care. This could have some negative effects on the relationship between DAISY and the other pharmacists. DAISY can take the option number two and decides not to contradict her colleague and keeps her concerns to herself because she has now solid facts about the product and its optimal use and because she does not know if her colleague was under commercial pressure. If she takes this option, Daisy has adhered to her professional obligation to practice legally, but she failed to act in the best interest of her patient. Daisy had the option number three, to avoid conflict with her colleague and considering the best interest of the patient, Daisy could choose to provide Loretta with a printout of information or choose or could choose to direct her to more information such as a reliable website. Taking this option, Daisy is handling Daisy with respect and making sure Loretta can make an informed decision for herself. We need to consider all options very carefully. There are also several other products and I would like to tell you about them as well. I see, but I'm interested in this one and I wouldn't like to miss a reader of this, um, of this special offer. If the product is as good as your colleague said, she pointed out that many customers were satisfied. I understand that you are concerned if this product is good for you, as it has only been available for a short period. We are still collecting data and monitoring safety and experience. Here's some in printed information that we have for our customers. It could help you to understand the product better. I would also like to refer you to this website where other useful information can be found. If I were you, I wouldn't hurry over this decision, but would use these sources to look at the available evidence. You could always come and ask me if there's anything you don't understand. As I said, you also have another option with some of the better known products which have clear evidence on effectiveness. In this case, we see that pharmacists could have a conflict of loyalty when their decisions would either affect a professional relationship with colleagues or result in suboptimal patient care or even patient harm. Pharmacists' primary role and function as healthcare practitioners is to benefit the patient. Patients seek care and services for pharmacists because they believe and trust that pharmacists will apply their expert knowledge their skills and abilities to help patients make better. Assuming responsibility for making reasonable efforts to ensure patients' trust is part of pharmacy's social commitment as professionals.